The universe is filled with coincidences, like the size of the moon and the sun in the sky, even though so far apart, or the shape of the Pac-Man Nebula, or the Wizard Nebula, or like the plot of The Force Awakens and every other Star Wars movie. The coincidences are everywhere. But here's a pretty strange coincidence, and it has to do with the nature of the universe itself. Follow along with me here. Let's consider black holes, a topic we've covered many times on this channel. If you've watched enough of our videos, you know a black hole is a region of space where matter and energy have been mashed so densely that the gravitational escape velocity exceeds the speed of light. Now we don't know how big black holes are, but it's possible that they've crushed down into an infinitely dense region known as a singularity. Singularity. Where have we heard that word before? Apart from Ray Kurzweil and his crew of technological singularitarians, that word comes up when we discuss the formation of the universe, the Big Bang. Back at the beginning, 13.8 billion years ago, everything in the entire universe was crushed down into a region of infinite density. And then, in a fraction of a second, everything expanded outward. Astronomers call this region of infinite density the Big Bang Singularity. Now, this can't be just a coincidence, right? It's the same word. It's the same word. Was the Big Bang Singularity just a really big black hole singularity? A black hole with all the mass of the universe inside it? Now, I'm going to admit this question is a little beyond my pay grade. To fully explain the science, I thought I'd bring in a ringer. Dr. Paul Matt Sutter is an astrophysicist with Ohio State University and the Astronomical Observatory of Trieste. Paul specializes in cosmic voids, but he knows plenty about both the Big Bang and black holes. Now, I've reached Paul on the set of his Ask a Spaceman podcast and thrown this zinger right at him. So, hey, Paul, what's the difference between the singularity that formed the Big Bang and a black hole singularity? Did the whole universe start off from a really massive black hole? Thanks, Fraser. So, when we're looking at singularities, it's important to keep in mind what a singularity is. A singularity is a place of infinite density, and that's not like really a thing. It just means that the mathematics that we're using to describe the situation have broken down. Like we get infinities in our answers when we try to calculate what's going on. And as far as we know, these kinds of things, these breakdowns in the mathematics happen in two places. One is at the center of a black hole where stuff is compressed down so much that uh, we can't follow the math anymore. And the other time is in the very early universe when the entire universe is crunched down to such a tiny volume with such high densities that we can't follow the math anymore. So that's the only thing that they have in common is that there's a singularity, which means we can't do the math anymore. And so even though they're like the same, they're very, very different. A black hole singularity is a point in space time. Like, like you live in the universe and you can point. There's a singularity like right over there or over there or over there. It's a piece of the universe. It's embedded in the larger universe, whereas the a uh, Big Bang singularity is the whole entire universe. It's a different thing. It's where the entire universe is compacted down to such incredibly high densities that our mathematics can't keep track of it anymore. So why didn't the early universe just collapse back into a black hole? Oh, that's a very good question, Fraser. You're thinking about these incredibly high densities in the early universe, and it's natural to wonder, well, why didn't it just behave uh, like a black hole behaves and crunch down into an infinitely uh, dense point? Why did it even bother expanding? And it's important here to remember just how different black holes are from the early universe. In both cases, we're using general relativity. These are the laws of gravity. They govern uh, the behavior of these systems. But we're using the same set of equations in different scenarios. We're using them to describe different things. A black hole is a particular solution 
to Einstein's equations of general relativity. And that solution comes about by asking the question, if I take a bunch of stuff over there and compact it down to incredibly high densities, what happens? The answer what happens is you get a singularity surrounded by an event horizon. That's one particular set of solutions to the mathematics of that scenario. But in the early universe, we have a different solution. We have a different thing going on. It's a, it's a different universe. The black hole solution is static. It's uh, fixed. It's unchanging with time. That's an assumption in the mathematics. But in the early universe, things are changing. It's a different set of questions. The questions we're trying to answer when we apply general relativity to the early universe is, if I fill up the universe evenly with a whole bunch of stuff, what does the whole entire universe do? That's a different question than the question we're asking about black holes. And so we get a different answer. Even though there's that incredibly high density, the mathematical solution describing it, because we're describing the time evolution of the universe, we get different answers than we get for the black hole bits. And when it comes to the early universe, if you fill it up evenly with a bunch of stuff and ask what the heck happens to the universe, there's only two answers. Either the stuff in the universe causes the universe to collapse and contract, or the stuff in the universe causes the universe to expand. And it depends on what the universe is made of. And it turns out, handily enough, the universe is made of the kind of stuff that makes it expand. It's that time evolution component that is important here that sets the difference between what's happening in the early universe and what's happening in a black hole. Could black holes have formed in the early universe because it had such high densities? Oh yeah, yeah, very clever, Fraser. I see where you're going with that. I see where you're going. Incredibly high densities, you're wondering, maybe a little piece of the universe pinched off and made a black hole in those early microseconds. And why couldn't have that black hole that pinched off uh, expanded to consume the rest of the universe? And the key here is, isn't about density, it's about differences in density. Right. What separates uh, what what separates a black hole from me is that it's way more dense than me. I hope so. That's what makes it a black hole. It's much more dense than its surroundings. But in order to make that black hole form, you had to have a little bit extra stuff, like in a pocket, like an extra gas cloud or a star a little bit higher density than normal. Then gravity can work and start pulling in more stuff and even more and even more, building and building until you get the gravitational collapse that leads to a black hole. But in the very early universe, everything was uniform. There were no differences in gravity. Yeah, it was incredibly high density, but if you could be transported back there and actually, you know, survive, you wouldn't feel any gravitational pull anywhere because every direction is the same density. You're surrounded by the same amount of stuff in every direction. There's no gravity. It all cancels each other out. So there's no opportunity for a black hole to form because any one spot in the universe is no more dense than any other. So all the gravity cancels out and you get, you get nothing. You don't get black holes. Black holes don't come on the scene until much, much later in the evolution of the universe. And by that time, the universe is so big uh, that the black holes can't affect the overall evolution. Right now, the universe is expanding. Will it someday collapse? Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, astrophysicists and cosmologists worried about this decades ago. We thought that, yeah, maybe the universe is expanding now, but maybe there's a little bit too much stuff in it. Eventually, that expansion will slow down, stop, and then reverse, and we'd end up in this big crunch scenario, the opposite of the Big Bang. But it turns out dark energy is here, and dark energy makes the expansion of the universe accelerate. So not only is the universe getting bigger every day, it's getting bigger and bigger, faster and faster every single day. And that, well, that kind of sucks. So that sounds pretty open and shut, but there's more to this journey. If you took the mass and energy of the entire universe 
and turn it into a black hole, it would have almost the exact same density as the universe itself, and an event horizon larger than the observable universe. So does that mean that we are, in fact, living inside a black hole? Can we tell the difference? To hear the answer to this question, you're going to need to click here and head over to Paul's YouTube channel, where he answers it, Ask a Spaceman style. Go ahead, click it, and make sure you subscribe to Paul's channel so you'll see more of his fascinating topics. Even though astronomers use the term singularity to describe both the beginning of the universe and the center of a black hole, they're different. And so, we still don't have a handy explanation for what caused the Big Bang. Now, I'm sure you've got plenty of questions, and I need more topics for shows, so throw more cosmology-related questions into the comments below, and I'll harvest them up for future shows. Now, in our next episode, we look at the different ways that stars can detonate a supernovae. All the different varieties may surprise you. Oh, and make sure you stick around for the blooper. Now, I'll just leave the link to part two of this episode, Are We Living in a Black Hole? Go ahead and click it. Speaking of bloopers, our Patreon community sees entire blooper reels, gets advanced access to all our videos, and sees no ads on Universe Today. So join the club of 496 amazing people who support us in making great space and astronomy content. The people who make these shows even possible. We'd like to thank Matt Woods, Blair Pigeon, and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans from the team. Want to get in on the action? Click here. The universe is. I didn't do anything. <laughs> you were about to laugh. Okay.